All right, guys, so this video, I actually got the inspiration for this from the movie called The Hurt Locker. It's an older war movie, really good. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. I'm sure most of you have probably seen it a hundred times, but there's a scene in the movie that always pissed me off where the main character is in a gunfight and one of his buddies gets shot. It's been a long time since I've seen this, so I might be screwing this up. Um, but one of his buddies gets shot and he goes back to retrieve some ammo off of him. I believe it's 50 BMG and it's covered in blood and he starts panicking trying to clean the bullet off He's like spitting on it rubbing it really hard as if it wouldn't fire because it has a little bit of blood on the shell casing Which always bugged me because it's extremely inaccurate as we all know ammo is pretty resilient and can live through all kinds of different conditions wet cold hot even Rusted sometimes and it will still work so today I thought we would take this to the extreme and I covered some bullets in several different substances, I guess you could say, and we're gonna see how resilient a bullet or a cartridge really is and see if this ammo will actually fire. Let's do it. And of course, the gun we're using for this video is the nine millimeter high point Yeet Cannon Gen 1. So the main reason why I'm using this is because I don't care if I break it, obviously, but they're also very tough and hard to destroy. I've tried, I've plugged the barrel, I've done all kinds of stuff and they just don't break easily. So it's also a safe gun to use for a video like this. And the first bullets we're gonna try are in water. They've been in this container for five days and obviously that's kind of extreme, but I just wanna see if water will get into the shell casing and ruin the powder or will they still fire after being underwater for almost a week. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this water out. It's already starting to freeze after being out here for five minutes. <laughs> So they're in our magazine. The first two are blazer brass and the third one is a spear gold dot. I'm just gonna aim at that hill and see if they'll fire. No problem. Lock the slide back and all three of those shot. Underwater for five days, not too bad. So I wasn't sure if the practice ammo would have sealed primers and that's why I did a high dollar round as well. But it looks like even if they're not sealed, they're good enough to not let water in. And by the way, if I'm talking weird, it's because I actually can't feel my face right now. It's frozen. All right, next up we have spray paint. So I completely covered these two bullets in red spray paint. It's on the primer, the bullet, the casing, everything. And I thought this would be probably the most similar to the blood from the Hurt Locker. Actually, this is probably way tougher because I let this paint dry overnight and it's completely covering the entire cartridge whereas the blood was just a little bit here and there and it was fresh but I did use red so it would look like blood we'll put them in our high point the primer worries me the most because if it's coated too thick it might not ignite let's see fired both of them and locked the slide open So that completely debunks the Hurt Locker thing and hopefully you can see that we've got a little bit of red paint on our magazine follower. I need to find those shell casings. Well I found one of them and it looks like some of that paint did come off either when it chambered or ejected and then on the primer you can see it knocked some of that paint off as well, but there is still a little bit on there. Other than the red paint, the shell casing looks completely fine. Hey guys, I know this video is extremely scientific and you just can't wait to see what happens next, but I'm quickly interrupting to let you all know that we are nominated for the Gundy Awards this year. So if you don't know what the Gundys are, it's basically an award show for gun tubers every year and the viewers actually decide who wins these awards by voting. So we're actually nominated for two categories, most entertaining creator, which is gonna be extremely tough to win because there's some huge gun channels in there, and then breakout creator, of the year and that one I really want to win so I'll put the link down in the description box below and in the pinned comment where you can go to vote you can actually vote every single day and they give you multiple votes per day so I'm not implying that you know you should use all your votes for this channel I would never do nothing like that but you can use your votes however you want and it's literally thanks to all of you guys that were nominated at all the dude that puts this thing on told me personally that a lot of you guys reached out and wanted us to get nominated and I appreciate that I love you all thank you for the support and hopefully we are in Texas in February winning a Gundy Award. Let's go. All right, so this is where it starts to get interesting. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but on the neck of the shell casing where the bullet meets, I actually put some Loctite glue all the way around. And then on this one, I put the same Loctite glue only on the primer. Chambered just fine. All right, so the first one is with the glue around the neck and the second one is with the glue on the primer. Perfect.
I figured those would work. That Loctite glue isn't very strong. All right, with these two, I did the exact same thing I did with the Loctite glue, except with Gorilla Super Glue. And this stuff says it bonds metal and it's super tough. So it's probably gonna be a harder test. You can see that one has the glue around the neck of the shell casing where the bullet meets. And then this one is on the primer. That's a big old glob of super glue right on the primer of that bullet. So I doubt the one that has glue on the primer will work. I think the other one probably will. I'm gonna turn my head towards you guys since it says this stuff bonds metal, just to be safe. And we'll see if they fire. It looks like it chambered. So I'm doing the one with glue around the bullet and the shell casing first, and then the glue on the primer second. All right, here we go. First one worked and I've got a dead trigger. It looks like it did not eject the shell casing. No, it did eject. The second one just didn't go in. And here we go with super glue on the primer. It worked. <laughs> Wow. That surprised me. Not only did it fire, it locked the slide open. I did not think the firing pin would be able to punch through that hard glob of super glue, but it worked. So I found the shell casing and I need you guys to see this. I thought that when I fired that or when the firing pin hit it, it would knock the glue off, but it definitely didn't. It's still on there and you can see there's a tiny little mark in the middle of that super glue where the firing pin just blasted right through it and still ignited the primer. Still covered in super glue and it fired no problem. It looks like it's pretty tough to ruin a cartridge or make it unshootable because so far all of these have fired. All right, so this might be the toughest test of the entire video. These bullets are completely frozen solid and a block of ice. They've been in here for about five days, but first we gotta get them out of here. Since the high point needs cleaned, we'll go ahead and use the Glock 17 MCK. Let's see if we can get those bullets out of that block of ice. Now I gotta find them. Well, I found three out of four, which ain't too bad. You can see this one is still halfway in a block of ice. And then these two have ice all over the primers, which is gonna be a big problem. And then our hollow point cavity on this one is completely filled with ice, so. Let's see if they work. All right, here we go. I got seven or eight rounds in here, but the first three are the ice bullets. So if you came across some ammo that was frozen solid in a block of ice, would they work? Let's find out. <laughs> no problem. That's that Glock reliability for you. They didn't look or feel any different. Bullets that were completely frozen solid in a block of ice for a week work just fine. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, I've got a full magazine in the gun. Let's see if we can clean some of that stuff out of there. I think we're back in business. <laughs> All right, these next two are the ones that I'm probably the most excited to try. So these are completely covered in flex seal. You can see that entire bullet is completely black and I've got another one in the magazine here. So I dipped these in a tub of Flex Seal, pulled them out and let them dry for 24 hours. And I think we'll run into a problem when we try to chamber it in the gun because it's actually throwing off the diameter of the cartridge. I guess we'll find out. I've got both of them in the magazine here. Put it into the gun and it didn't chamber. I have a feeling the trigger's probably dead. Let's see. Oh, it fired. Oh my gosh. I didn't think it was closed all the way. It did not eject the first round, but it fired. So there's the shell casing that I just pulled out of the gun. You can see a lot of that flex seal got scraped off, but it looks just fine. Let's try the next one. Same thing. So I tried to beat the slide home. Let's see if it'll fire. No. Oh. <laughs> It did on the second one. So the trigger was dead at first. I pulled it again and it fired. Mm -hmm. 
And once again, it did not eject the spent shell casing. It's still stuck in there, but both of those bullets fired completely covered in flex seal. <laughs> that's crazy. All right, guys, I guess that's gonna do it for me today. Um, like I said, I just tried to think of some of the weirdest stuff I could cover bullets in and this is the stuff that I came up with. It's not going to get too much tougher than this in the natural world. Like you're not going to drop bullets in a bucket of super glue. At least I wouldn't think so. The ice and water tests I would say are probably the most realistic because it is actually possible to have ammo in arctic conditions or ammo that's been exposed to water and it passed both of those with flying colors. All the others like the flex seal and super glue and spray paint are probably above and beyond anything that you're actually going to encounter. Although I think the spray paint test did kind of prove that hurt locker theory wrong and we all knew a little bit of blood is not gonna ruin your 50 cal ammo either way i'm freezing my nuts off so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up right here i hope you all enjoyed it if you did please let me know down in the comments below as always hit that like button for me guys i'd really appreciate it thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time